Pulls the two reds by the centre pocket to snooker, Peter. Not at all happy with that one. Maltese Joe doesn't look a bundle of fun at the moment either. Very, very loose shot from Joe. He really expected to get that one and needed to. Just the one shot remaining now. Could have, of course, still go for the finish. All the reds are potable. He will just nudge onto the black here with the cue ball. That makes the next red potable into the same pocket. The one on the bottom cushion next. Well, it's looking good now for Joe. <coughs> Four easy reds in the black, very close to the bottom right hand corner pocket. In playing this one into the centre pocket, he will be cannoning onto the red next to it. And that's worked out nicely. Bring the cue ball back gently for the final one into the centre. And this is very easy now. Black into the bottom right after this red. <laughs> well, he's asking the referee for the rest. He certainly does not want to miss this black after all the hard work he's put into gaining position on it. Levels it up, one frame apiece. We left this last quarter final of the John Bull Bitter London Pool Championship with the reigning champion, Maltese Joe Barbara, and the winner of the qualifying tournament for pub players, Peter Lofts from Slough, all square at one frame apiece. That's how it is as we rejoin Steve Clark and Chris Carter after a re rack in the third. So we had a frame lasting uh, 13 minutes and that ended in stalemate with a snooker situation which meant a re-rack. So back with the re-rack and it's still all square, one frame apiece. Lovely open shot from Peter there, blocking the bottom right. He had no choice of course because the red it's covered by the yellow over the top left. Well, it's true he may have had no choice, but I think if he's inviting his opponent to play a tactical game, he may pay the penalty for it. Peter Lofts would readily admit that he's not got the experience of Joe to play a tactical game. Well, he was hoping to pot that one and move the yellow. He moved the yellow all right, but didn't quite get the red in. Joe played the yellow onto the black, hoping to send the black towards the bottom left, but caught the black a little bit too thin. And those reds will certainly go, the two reds to the right of the table will go.
Well, both players not exactly playing at their best at the moment. He's looking to block the top left now and cover those two reds. Very good attempt, but I feel the reds will still pass the yellow. Chance now to pop the red to the bottom pocket and move the awkward one. Very nicely done. Enough the yellow. Nicely played, but he's out of position. If he goes for a pot now, the cue ball's coming right back down the table. and hard to get back at the table but unfortunately for Peter we made contact with one of the yellows and the black ball has ended up right out of position next the cue ball has ended up right out of position next to the black now he's in big trouble in this frame a double up and down the table for the bottom right hand corner do you think Steve it's a possibility Chris it's got to go well that sad miss should really cost him the frame Maybe not now, but eventually, because I'm sure Joe will be looking for a tight snooker from here. Rolling up to the yellow behind the black for a snooker. And not an easy snooker to get out of. He's looking to see if he can get in between the two yellows to come off one cushion. It looks very, very tight. Looks very much as though Peter Locke is lining up a four cushion shot here. The bottom side and the top side cushion. Maybe he's just playing with left hand side for the one cushion. And that's the one. Oh, it's a good shot. Now I think he's uh, made Joe's mind up as to what the next nuke is going to be. Or maybe the jaw will stop uh, Joe getting at that yellow. He would, of course, ideally like to roll it behind the yellows on the top cushion there. And again, putting his young opponent under pressure. Well, he escaped the last snooker very nicely with the aid of right-hand side, and he's using right-hand side again here. That's a foul. Two visit. Missed that one by quite a considerable amount. Giving Joe two shots again. The one into the top left next. 
bringing the cue ball down the table for the final four yellows. And again, another loose shot from Joe. But he's okay, the red's in a bad position, so it's very, very easy for Joe to snooker him. In towards the two yellows here. And he couldn't really have asked for anything much better than that. The yellow to the left making the angle very difficult indeed for Peter to escape this. May have to play this side of that particular yellow, Chris, with a lot of right-hand side to come off the other side, Chris, to make contact with the red. Well, in fact, he can get between them. He's going off just the one cushion. <laughs> A great escape from Peter, but he won't be pleased with where the red's gone. Right on the side cushion. Here comes another snooker behind those two yellows. Well, Peter can come off the right-hand side cushion to make contact with the red now. <laughs> a foul oh. shot there, an attempt from Do Peter it. to escape. And oh, he incredible. paid uh, the penalty for that in lots of ways. Yes, it's very, very bad luck when you get out of the snooker, Chris, and uh, the ball goes and knocks one of the opponents in. Again, another loose shot from visit. Joe. He's certainly not in his top form in this match. Of course, Joe has the opportunity to come off the bottom cushion behind those two yellows again, if he feels it necessary. Looking to see if the plants, the two yellows together, will go in off the other yellow. If not, he'll be rolling up behind them. This one is a slightly harder snooker for Peter to escape from. He may elect to use the bottom cushion and the right-hand side cushion to escape. Once again, he has the choice of a plant or rolling up behind them. Well, this, this time he's playing the plants. Black into the center left-hand pocket. And Maltese Joe, one shot away from taking the lead, and there it goes. Maltese Joe goes ahead, he now leads by two frames to one. Fourth frame, Joe Barbara to break. Joe Barbara ahead for the first time in this quarter-final, makes the break. One of each goes down, one yellow and one red, so he'll just dominate his choice and they'll be the ones he'll be playing. Fancy Joe to take on the Reds here. They're all nicely positioned. The Blacks in the open. Red Bulls nominated. A 
I think you should be out there to advise him, Steve, and then perhaps he'd just speed up the game a little bit. Yes, it's uh, very easy from where we're sat, Chris, but when you're down there in front of the cameras, you've got to perform, and that's a cracker. Well, we'll be playing this one into the centre pocket, and then the next one into the opposite centre pocket, and running the cue ball down for the red, underneath the black for the bottom left. Look at the shot now. The red by the black is the awkward one. Obviously, it will not pot into the bottom right. <laughs> Depends what sort of angle he has on this shot to what he does next. He's running the cue ball through gently. And he'll be bringing the cue ball off the side cushion, back across the table for the black into the same pocket. And that's just about perfect. And Joe sinks the black to extend the advantage now. He now leads by three frames to one and looks a lot happier about it. Welcome back to Dartford, where the pub qualifier for this London Championship, Peter Lofts from Slough, after winning the first frame, has found it very hard going against the reigning champion, Maltese Joe Barbara. It's the best of 11. We rejoin it for the fifth, and Joe's leading 3-1. Smacks the pack wide open, but nothing open goes table. down. <laughs> well, again, I'm still sure Joe will choose reds from this position, and again, I think he'll be going for the finish. <coughs> All the reds are beautifully placed. Just the one awkward shot is the black on the side cushion. Red ball uh, dominated. Joe has been playing a lot of exhibition games over the past few months. Has put in uh, 20 solid hours of practice in the past few days to get ready for this quarter-final match and says that he's happy and sharp. But he won't be too happy about that. No, he had to finish on his mind there, Chris. He played a very f bad first shot, out of position, left himself a hard shot next, and uh, that's the result, it's over the pocket. But it's not done too much damage, it's blocked the pocket, and that's the one where the black will be going. Cubal's close. Fortunate to get away with that one. You can play this one now into the corner pocket and hope to move the one off the side cushion. And he's just missed that one. Bad luck, but uh, Peter really can't afford to live dangerously against an opponent as uh, ruthless and skilled as Maltese Joe. That's a great shot from Peter. Very, very nice shot. Peter in carrying the cue ball onto that red has now made the black double. The black will now double into the right hand centre pocket. Well, unlucky there for Peter, he had to get underneath the two awkward yellows, so he had to play the shot with pace. And because of that reason, it's caught the jaws and stayed over the pocket.
Joe trying to lay a snooker on Peter, knowing the red near the yellow of the bottom pocket stops him from getting to that one. And the red nearest to Cubal, hopefully blocking the other two, but Peter can just see them. Here comes the snooker now, I feel. Just roll up behind the red. <coughs> He's got two choices here. He can come off the side cushion for the yellows or straight off the top cushion. escape but he won't be pleased in clipping it towards the pockets where the red is Safety battle beginning to develop in this frame. Again, Peter didn't take the opportunity to get the yellow away from that corner of the table. And an unfortunate double kiss. And it's out this time, though. has given Maltese Joe something to think about. Very difficult, if not impossible, to put a snooker situation. A chance here for Peter Loss to play the yellow <coughs> off the bottom cushion to cannon the black away from that particular side cushion. the shot he tried but he just missed the black all the yellows are now potable but the blacks still very awkwardly placed Joe with just the one awkward red he has the chance to double that one now, onto the red, over the pocket, down the left-hand corner of the table. But refuses the chance, he's gone to block the top pocket. Well, the yellow does not pass that red now. Peter Loss been playing pool for five years. Too pleased with that shot. He 
hit it too hard. He wanted to leave himself a chance to double the awkward red across the table. Thrown down the gauntlet to Peter Lofts. Great it's chance for Peter here, uh, Chris. Roll this one in and the next yellow into the top right. Well, that couldn't have landed any worse. Tied up against the top cushion. Not only is this made difficult, but the cue ball will be travelling close to the centre pocket. Not just close, but straight in. <coughs> Two visits. Free table. Well, obviously, Joe will be looking to pop the three reds and keep two shots for the black. He'll be rolling this one up to the top left-hand corner pocket. Well, in fact, looks like he's playing for the middle. That Second was uh, a lot harder, very risky, but it's paid dividends. And Maltese Joe finishes the job off. And there, watching the action, just rising out of his seat is Mick Casey, who will meet the winner of this in the semi-final. And there is the magnificent trophy awaiting the winner of this competition and Six with it £2,500 in loot and Maltese Joe strides to the table well on target towards at least a semi-final place open table didn't get hold of the cue ball with that break all the balls have stayed together although having said that the yellows have come out quite nicely they're all possible Well, if they wasn't, then they certainly are now. Open table. <laughs> another good shot from Joe. Right in a red and disturbing another one off the side cushion. Over the centre pocket. Joe has the chance to pop this one into the bottom right and play into the bunch towards the left-hand side cushion, which he did do. It's a great shot from Joe, using the side cushion to cannon onto the yellow. And go in the pocket. He's on for the next red into the bottom right now. He'll have to take that one now, otherwise it will not go into the bottom left. He's left himself a long shot into the top right. But if he could get this one, he's well on his way. Difficult shot now to the top left. <laughs> Got to play with bottom on the cue ball to get back for the one in the centre. Well, in fact, that was a great shot. Play with bottom and right-hand side on the cue ball. May elect to play this one for the black into the centre pocket on the left-hand side of the table. Running off the side cushion and off the bottom cushion.
Perfect pace. <laughs> this one should be easy for Joe. And the fine <laughs> clear up there from Malty, Joe Barbara, takes him now into a five frames to one lead. And Maltese Joe there, who was worried early on, I'm sure, by the amateur champion, now looking very much in command. Seventh frame, Peter Lofts to break. And uh, Peter Lofts must have dreamt about this match for some time, and uh, the nightmare is that he must win this frame to stay alive. Open table. Yes, he'll be wondering what's going on. He won the first frame in grand style, and since then he, he has not had a look in at all. It's 5 1. Well, Joe using the yellow to pot the red. He's red nominated nominate. reds, they're all potable. Just the one on the left hand side cushion seems to uh, be rather difficult. All the rest are very nicely placed. The blacks in the open. This could be uh, a clearance here from Joe. If Joe wishes here, he could play the one in the bottom right and try to disturb the one off the side cushion. Good attempt. He's left himself. With still that awkward red to pot. Perhaps Joe will be wishing he played that awkward red before now. Instead of leaving it to last, he may be forced, as you can see there, he's lining up a double. He may be forced to play the double. <coughs> well, he'll be hoping the black has not blocked the path of the red. And is Peter Lofts just two shots away from a departure? from this competition will he have to go back to the white horse in Sippenham to uh, do it all over again for next year well, it looks as though Joe's lining up the double for the top right hand corner pocket but because it, it appears he's too straight for the double into the centre because he'll get the double kiss That was well, a long way out, Chris. It was indeed, and uh, although uh, Joe has got a margin of four frames in hand, it looks as though he might need at least one of them, because this is now a frame that Peter Locks could win. Yes, indeed, Chris. He's certainly favourite here in this frame now. Well, Joe looking to come off the two side cushions to make contact with the red, and it's a good one. yellow towards the bottom right hand corner pocket gently hoping for the snooker at the same time but uh, Joe can get through to make contact with the red I'm sure Peter Lofts believes that Joe can't get very much out of this but uh, even so it was a bit of a, a wasted opportunity to put Barbara under some pressure well, apart from that, uh, Chris, he's also put two yellows onto the side cushion. Looking 
the well, he looked to, to make contact with the yellow to go into the centre pocket. He wasn't too far away either. No prizes for near misses, I'm afraid. Bad shot from Peter, and that could cost him the match. Really must not miss shots like that. One good shot from Joe here, and he's on the black. And there is that good shot, and he's now lined up on the black. This is the shot that will put him through to the semi-final. And there it goes. Maltese Joe Barber has done it. He's beaten the amateur champion by six frames to one. And Maltese Joe Barber, the reigning John Bull champion, is through to the semi-final. Well, that really was a brave effort, that one, by Peter Lofts. But uh, Maltese Joe Barber is here, getting better and better with every shot, it seemed to me. And Maltese Joe, a man now to fear. But next week on Shoot Pool, we're going to see the first semi-final between Steve Sanders, runner-up last year, and big Charlie Nolan. Charlie, never a man to be underestimated, as he proved with his totally unexpected quarter-final win over the Scottish champion, Ross McInnes. And in a fortnight's time, well, Joe's back again against Mick Casey. A mixed demolition job on England's number one, Dave Dolman, has certainly been the performance of the competition so far. That should be quite a semi-final. But we'll see you same time, same place next Friday. Until then, it's good night from the shoot ball team at the Orchard in Dartford. Good night. <laughs>
Paggan. <laughs> Paggan. This girl is wearing new Harmony hairspray. No chance. Harmony? Very unlikely. She is. Hmm. New Harmony hairspray. She's wearing it. Nonsense. How many times do I have to tell you that this girl is wearing new Harmony hairspray? Is she? It's so natural, only you can tell.